Have you ever been somewhere and saw somebody holding up this sign? It's one of the more popular verses. If you spend any time around church or Christians, you're going to hear that verse or some iteration of it or someone's going to have it on a magnet, a t-shirt, a coffee cup, a bracelet, something. Why? Because it's super important. Why? Because it of everything that's going on around. I mean, it's just... This weekend, we're going to get into the story. We're going to look at John. We're going to look at the last part of chapter two and the first part of John chapter three. And we're going to look at this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And Nicodemus has everything that the world needs. He is the who's who of Israel. But he's got this, this thing going on inside. He's got this deep itch in his soul. And he's like, I've, I've read, I've memorized, I've gone to all the right parties. I know all the right people. I've got the right political connections. I've got the right connections out in the world. I've, I'm, I got it all, but why am I still undone? And Jesus is going to, in if I can paraphrase the paraphrase that John gives us of the big conversation, Jesus looks at him and he's just like, dude, you can't earn what God has given you. You're broken. You're fractured. God is giving you life. And it doesn't matter where you went to school, what kind of clothes you wear, what your political connections or affiliations are. It's like if you are breathing, God has given you the gift of salvation. You want it or not. And so they're going to have this conversation. We're going to look more into that. And we're going to look at why this passage is so incredible and why this the passages around it just make it all the more awesome. So right here at 824 Laurel Street on Sunday at 10 o'clock, masked up and distance. Come join us. Be with us. Uh, we are trying to get the family lounge put together. But uh, if you've got any tech savviness, uh, I'm on the struggle bus. Just kidding. We'll get it all figured out. Uh, number two, if you don't want to come in, if you are still gathering online, if you want to check it out virtually, we are still at facebook.com backslash communitas church, and we will get that all set up for you. So again, here, 824 Laurel Street at 10 o'clock, masked up and distance, or online, facebook.com backslash communitas church. Both of those are at 10 o'clock. Some things to be looking at with um, just some questions to consider as we look over the passage. If you want to read that will be, um, you know, just the last part of, of two and then, uh, John chapter three, one through 21. If you want to read those verses at a time, be thinking about that. And then for our groups, if you're, if you're gathering together, a few things to consider. Okay. So we see that, that Jesus doesn't answer Nicodemus by giving him, uh, like more homework. He's not like, oh, you should read this latest thing, check out this latest podcast, follow this blogger, uh, try this spiritual exercise, whatever. No, he just gives him the gospel. And, and so, if, you know, so let's consider our speech. How do you reply to questions and situations in, in your life, whether it's it, within your own life or whether it's the, the questions and situations that you find around you? Or are we replying, if we are, we as believers, are we replying to the situations and questions of the world with further discipline or with relationship with the Lord? Are we assigning tasks or are we giving grace? Are we proclaiming the gospel? Are these truths coming from scripture or are they coming from elsewhere? And then secondly, Nicodemus shows how easy it is for us to replace relationships, the, our relationship with the Lord with disciplines. And disciplines are, I'm not against disciplines. I actually quite enjoy them and I would recommend some of them to, uh, to some of us. However, those need to out, be an output or a result of our relationship with the Lord, our union with the Lord, our abiding in the Lord, as we've said in the weeks past. So where are you looking for a new way instead of looking for the true way? Remember, and just as a side, I know that some of us, I mean, we're just in these seasons of, of doubt and confusion and hurt, and, and we're not really sure how to process through that. And, and sometimes we can confuse that with unbelief or somebody, some people might tell us that that's the result of unbelief. And it might be, but it probably isn't. You're probably asking really good questions. And, uh, and, and so sometimes we come up with uh, theologians and, and church folks for our time have called that, you know, maybe it's a dark night of the soul or maybe it's, uh, it's a wall 
Um, and oftentimes those are just opportunities and invitations from the Lord to come out to, to know him deeper, to know him more. And so if, if you're wrestling and you're struggling, man, let's have that conversation. That's part of, of what we want to be about. And, and especially if, if you've been a believer for a while and you're just kind of hitting this spot where you're just going, I just don't know what's going on. Uh, let's, uh, you're not meant to do that alone. Um, we're in a unique spot in history where people think that they can just do that on their own. Um, and for the large part, and we've got these resources. That's also what Nicodemus is encountering, is he's trying to do it by himself. And Jesus is like, you, you can't, can't do that by yourself. You can't give yourself life. You can't give what you've, uh, or you can't, uh, you can only, you can only receive that life. You can't give yourself life. Um, also, what's your understanding of the gospel? In our groups, let's discuss this. What is your understanding of the gospel? And if if you're a believer. How would you say that to yourself? How, how would you present the gospel? How would you articulate the gospel to yourself without using all the flowery and uh, kind of you know, theologically driven church language that you may have learned since understanding the gospel? How would, you, how would you say that in just plain English as understandably as you can? And then also, man, let's just check ourselves. Let's take a moment to, to reflect. And where are we being like Nicodemus? How are we comparing our good deeds to the bad deeds of others so that we would feel better about our position before God? And P.S., that's called idolatry. And I'm guilty too. So if you're like, oh my gosh, um, you're among friends. Let's repent and let's return to the Lord. So, and then put yourself in, in Nicodemus' shoes. With what sin are you wrestling with right now? And how does Jesus provide you life to that? And uh, ask your group to help you. And then finally, let's take some time in prayer and to just praise the Lord for what he has done, the generous gift that he's given us of his grace by his son that we don't need to, uh, we can't earn it, that he's given his, his son to us, that by the power of his Holy Spirit we'd be reunited with him, that the fruit that was separated from the tree becomes rooted again and enjoys life to the full. All right. Have a great rest of your weekend. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. Uh, it's been a weird winter, but it looks like spring will be here for a day or two. So hope you enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for this conversation that we get to see. Uh, Lord, help us to see the ways that we are acting as Nicodemus and help us to walk in the ways of truth, in the ways of grace that we would not be so stuck on what is here, but that, Lord, we would receive what you have put right in front of us, that we receive life to the full and walk in that. Amen. All right, we'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock, masked up in distance, 824 Laurel Street, or online at facebook.com, uh, backslash Queen of Toss Church. Go in peace.